bouquet of flowers for Mrs. Conway. A donation is being made in her name to the Injured Marine Semper Fi Fund. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for honors to General Conway. Ladies and gentlemen, now joining General Conway in the reviewing area is General James F. Amos. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the publishing of the orders and the transfer of the Battle Color of the Marine Corps from General Conway to General Amos. Assisting in the transfer of the Battle Color will be the Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, Sergeant Major Carlton W. Kent. From the President of the United States to General James T. Conway, Commandant of the Marine Corps. Subject, change of command. Effective 22 October 2010, you will stand detached from your present station and duties. For the President, Robert M. Gates, Secretary of Defense. From the President of the United States to General James F. Amos, United States Marine Corps. Subject, Assumption of Command. Effective 22 October 2010, you will stand detached from your present station and duties. You will proceed and report to Headquarters Marine Corps, the Pentagon, for duty as Commandant of the United States Marine Corps. For the President, Robert M. Gates, Secretary of Defense. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing as we proudly render honors to the 35th Commandant of the Marine Corps, General James F. Amos.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the 35th Commandant of the Marine Corps, General James F. Amos. I said I was about to jump out of my skin. Uh, it would probably be an understatement. Uh, Secretary Gates, uh, Secretary Mavis, thank you for uh, being with us today. We've got many distinguished visitors. Mr. Ambassador, thank you for being here today. Uh, our senior executive uh, executives from the Department of Defense, uh, my fellow general officers, flag officers, as a row of commandants that are right over here. Men, thank you for being a part of this today and for your wise uh, counsel over the last 90 days. And I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge my fellow assistant commandants. There's a warm spot in my heart for the assistant commandants of the Marine Corps. We've got a whole host of them over here on the left side. Men, thank you for being here today. We've got good friends, family. Uh, we've got the Carmel High School class that I graduated with. Where are you? They're down there. They come to everything. Good to have you here today. Uh, Family, friends, Marines, friends of Marines, and last but not least, my wife of uh, 40 years, my two children, our two, our daughter-in-law and son-in-law, and my, and our four grandchildren, my sister and my dad. Thank you for being part of this historic event in the 235 years of rich history of our beloved Corps. Robert Burns made a pretty poignant comment one day when he said, the mark of a good speech is to have a very good beginning and a very good ending, and not much in between. I'm acutely aware of what my role is here today, and I will live up to Robert Burns' expectations. On this date, 12 months ago, on October the 22nd of 2009, we had 28,000 Marines forward deployed. We had 6,800 in Iraq executing the drawdown of a very successful campaign that Secretary Gates and that our Commandant has talked about. Led by Major General Rick Tryon, they finished their mission in March and April of this year, proving to the world and to the people of Iraq that Al-Qaeda and their extremist insurgency could be beat. At the same time on the ground was Brigadier General Larry Nicholson in Afghanistan with 12,000 Marines and sailors. Today as we meet here, there are 20,000 Marines and sailors in what is arguably the most dangerous part of all of Afghanistan, the Helmand Province. Led by Major General Rich Mills, they are at 8.30 at night. As the Commandant referred to, they are coming in off patrols and they are going out. They are a happy lot. We have reason for optimism as a nation with what those Marines and our soldiers and our airmen and our sailors are doing every day and every night in Afghanistan. Yet, this past spring, 5,000 Marines boarded five amphibious ships and sailed to the aid of our southern neighbor in Haiti that earthquake-stricken country that was so devastated. And for 45 days, those Marines and sailors transited back and forth from those seven amphibious ships, providing care and sustenance for the people of Haiti. Less than 90 days ago, the 15th Marine Expeditionary Unit pulled off the coast of Pakistan to aid and assist our Pakistani brothers and sisters flying over 400 miles deep into Pakistan, providing medical care, transportation, evacuation, and just general care for the Pakistani people who were devastated by their floods. The 26th Marine Expeditionary Unit sailed 30 days early so that they could, so that they could go join them over off the coast of Pakistan. And all the while, our Harriers were flying off our big deck amphibs and they were flying 
combat patrols into Afghanistan in support of the Joint Force Commander. And last but not least, but not least, less than 40 days ago, one of those ships sailed west and recaptured the pirated ship Magellan Star from the Somali pirates, giving it back to its rightful owner and releasing the captive crew. Ladies and gentlemen, in 1952, Congress wrote into their law, they defined the Marine Corps, and one of the things they said we would always be was the most ready when the nation is the least ready. Some people think that's trite and it's not applicable. I will tell you what's happened in the last 12 months of those 202,000 Marines and those great sailors and airmen and soldiers across our nation has proven that our nation still needs a force that is the most ready when the nation is the least ready. Ladies and gentlemen, that will be my focus during my competency for the next four years. God bless you and thank you for being here today, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The pass in review will now commence, during which the United States Marine Band will perform the Armed Services Medley, featuring the service songs of the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Coast Guard, as well as the Marines' hymn. 